Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, in this video, we're going to calculate, we're going to drive uh, input impedance of a transmission line. In my last video, uh, we drived uh, characteristics impedance of a transmission line. So here's our basic model. We have a generator that is connected to a load via transmission line. Uh, characteristics impedance of this line is Z0. ZG, as you can see here, this is actually my uh, generator impedance and this is my load impedance so what we're trying to calculate we're trying to calculate this zn all right what is that impu input impedance of a transmission line so if you recall uh, characteristics impedance for a lossy line from the last video i think it was r of prime plus j omega l of prime divided by g of prime plus j omega c of prime this was a uh, characteristics impedance for a lossy line for a lossless line it was since in lossless line there is no r so it's just basically l over c all right so far so good okay so let's start off and let's start manipulating this equation so if you re let's recall the equation for my voltage voltage is given by vo plus e to the negative j beta z so we're no longer using gamma because gamma consists of alpha plus j beta or uh, since we're considering our line itself is a lossless line so we're just going to use beta z plus v o minus e to the j beta z i of z if recall i of z is actually in terms of voltage this is going to be v o plus divided by z naught minus v o minus divided by z naught e to the j beta z all right, so we're going to start off with this uh, definition and we're going to start manipulating this. So let's recall something else as well. We know gamma is VO minus divided by VO plus. What is VO minus? Is act actually reflected voltage divided by the incident voltage. Isn't it? So if I want to solve for my VO minus, if I were to solve for my VO minus, VO minus is going to be gamma times VO plus. This is very important because we're going to use this relationship here. So in place of VO minus, if I were to plug in my gamma times VO plus, so I can factor this out, the top equation would become VO plus. I'm factoring out my VO plus E to the negative J beta Z plus in place of VO minus, we're going to use gamma times VO plus. We're going to use gamma times VO plus. So it's just going to be gamma E to the J beta z All right this is going to be my top equation now i of z i'm going to do exactly the same thing i'm going to make that replacement in place of vo minus i'm going to make a replacement of r times vo plus and i'm going to factor out vo plus divide by z naught i'm sorry i forgot to write negative j beta z i forgot to write this so this is just going to be e to the negative j beta z minus r so prime e to the j beta z all right this is what my equation looks like so far okay uh, i hope uh, you understood the process that we're going from here to here okay so remember when we are driving the equation for my characteristics impedance we said okay what is the location of this point when my load is connected so z is equals to zero and here so if z is equals to zero what would be the number behind zero that would be some negative value so we're going to say this is this value is actually negative l so we're going to evaluate and this negative l is located at what my where my zn is which means my generator is being at what point my generator is connecting being connected to my transmission line if my load is uh, the, the the location of my load is z is equals to zero then definitely it is somewhere behind that my load so my generator is somewhere at the back so this location is negative l so i'm going to do that i'm going to i'm going to write the definition of my z in and i'm going to evaluate at z is equals to negative l so once i evaluate this so z in is going to be v of z evaluated at negative l and i of z evaluated at negative l so i'm going to evaluate both of these equation in terms of l so my z in would look something like this 
I hope you see, you all seeing this. So this top equation would become V O plus. So instead of Z, I'm going to put negative L. So when I put negative L, this will change into L and this would become positive. So this would become E to the negative J B L plus plus my gamma E to the negative J B L. Why it's becoming negative in place of Z, we're just plugging negative L. So this would become negative divided by VO plus Z naught plugging in negative L here E to the J beta L minus reflection coefficient E to the negative J B L okay this is what my equation would become I can also rewrite this equation in the form of this so Z in is going to be V naught will cancel out both of these will cancel out so this will go on top. So this would come out to be like this. Z naught. So if I divide both sides by E to the negative JBL. Divide this side by E to the JBL. So I can also rewrite this equation as 1 plus gamma E to the negative J2BL. 1 minus gamma E. 1 minus gamma E to the negative J to B L. So when I divide this by, uh, when I divide both sides by 1 over E, uh, the top and the bottom, this will cancel out. So you will get 1 here. And this thing has positive power. So when I take this up, this would become negative. That's why negative negative is positive. So that's why you get negative 2 J B L. Same thing on the bottom one. Okay, so this is 1. So now, in place of gamma, I know something about gamma. Gamma is ZL minus Z0 divided by ZL plus Z0. So what I'm going to do, in place of my gamma, I'm going to plug that value in. So ZN evaluated at Z would become Z0, which is just this guy. Whole thing. ZL plus Z0 E to the JBL plus ZL minus Z0 E to the negative JBL. This is another way of writing it. This is another way of writing it. So just look at this. Just so basically what I'm doing is this. In place of my gamma, forget about this. This is another way of writing it. But here what have I done? Just look at this. Z naught is on top instead of a e g b l, which is actually it's in the equation. In place of gamma, I'm just simply writing the values of Z L plus Z naught, Z L minus Z naught. I'm going to do exactly the same thing at the bottom as well because at the bottom you also have your gamma value. So this would become Z L plus Z naught e to the J B L plus Z, sorry minus minus Z L minus Z naught e to the negative j b l i hope you're getting it okay so far so good so i know something else too i know e e to the j theta is actually cos theta plus or minus plus or minus j sine theta this is also one of the Euler's identity. So once I apply this, I'll end up with Z0. Sorry, Z0, which is the whole thing. ZL cos BL plus J Z0 sine BL divided by Z0 cos BL plus J ZL sine BL. All right, I know my uh, trig identity, which is e to the plus minus j theta is actually cos theta plus or minus j sine theta. So based on that, I got my coses and sines. All right, so when I manipulate this a little bit, I know what is sine over cosine. Sine over cosine is actually tangent. So the last replacement that I'm going to do, I'm going to say my z0 is going to be z in is going to be Z0 multiplied by ZL 
plus j z naught tan b l divided by z naught plus j z l tan b l this is the Im input impedance of my transmission line this is what you would see at this particular point so last time when we were looking at our videos uh, in, in voltage reflection coefficient we were actually just looking at it where we were assuming my z naught is indeed is equals to my zn or my zg so both of these things are same and the only thing that was changing and i have a mismatch is due to the load mismatch but here as you can see there could be a reason that you have a load mismatch and also there could be a reason that you will also have a mismatch due to my zn because zn looks like some looks something like this all right so this is how you drive uh, input impedance of your transmission line uh, i hope you like this small video on uh, on the derivation process if you have any questions um, leave it in a comment section and don't forget to subscribe to my channel